Hello chess family, it's me, National Master Jesse James, and today we're going to be taking another look from Mammoth Book of World's Best Chess Games. Here we have William Steinitz versus Michael Shikorin, 1892. Here we're going to see a nice Rui Lopez where Shikorin just gets blasted out the water. Let's go ahead and see how William does his work. Here we start off with d4e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the Rui Lopez of course, over 500 years old, and definitely one of my favorites because there's many different variations and a master will try to make as many uh, complications as possible. Also it's very hard to memorize just one line here as white has a lot of different setups and strategies here. Knight f6 attacking the e4 pawn making this the Berlin variation. And a nice move here, pawn to d3. This steers you away from you Berlin players that are trying to go to the end game, so ha ha ha, we got you. So uh, d3 gets played here. And pawn to d6, a very solid pawn structure here. Whenever they play d6 here, it's a bad idea to play the d4s uh, right away and to, definitely to take. I see a lot of lower rated players doing this. And well, the reason why this is bad is because this pawn structure has no weaknesses to it. So we want to go ahead and get the extra space by playing like any true Roy Lopez player knows. Pawn to c3 and then pawn to d4. Of course, this is something we have to build up because e4 will be undefended. So. Let's see how William continues. Pawn c3, again looking for this idea. Pawn g6, and I really like this idea. Here because the, the pawns are in the way of this dark square bishop, black says, you know what, I'm gonna play bishop g7 and go ahead and castle over here. And well, yeah, my bishop's just gonna look nice on this long diagonal, and I'm gonna try to control this d4 square. Well, when I first started playing Rui Lopez and against this, uh, against this plan in particular, I had a terrible score because the regular plans here for the Rui Lopez just just does not work. In fact, it works out terribly. For instance, one of the bad things that you'll see is after knight bd2, which is a Steinus knight maneuver, which is very uh, common, the knight goes to f1, and here you have the choice of e3 or g3. Well, if you go to g3 in these variations, the knight is just terrible. Typically in Rui Lopez, we go for kingside attack, and because black fianchettoed over here, fianchettos are very hard to attack, the idea just does not work out very well at all. In fact, this knight's just terrible because, again, it's just conquered by these, um, th th this pawn right here. So, knight bd to d2, defending the e4 pawn. William Steins can still get his knight to f1, e3, or maybe even c4. Because the pawn is on c3 here, there's no other really good square to play it to. Bishop g7, knight to f1, castles, and bishop to a4. This may look like a strange move to a lot of people. Um, why was this being played? Hopefully you can understand that, well, this bishop is really not doing too much. We never really want to take here because, well, if you take, you're really only helping out black here. After pawn takes on c6, now black has natural ideas about d5. Uh, the bishop pair is now on his side, and even open files to attack. Here, if I'm playing black, I would be very happy. So white has to be very careful about what they need to do. If, in fact, it's not even too sure what you're supposed to do. Like I said, I had to do a little research to find out white's best plan in this situation, which William will, will, will soon show us. I don't want to give that away just yet. But what is the idea of this bishop to a4 move? Well, when the bishop goes back right here, the idea is really to go maybe b3 to put pressure on f7 in some lines, or play it back to c2, which is very common. A lot of beginners think, well, this is a pretty weird looking move. When you put your bishop to c2, isn't it just blocked in by the pawns? Well, a lot of times in the Rue Lopez, we're trying to go for king side attack, so we try to control the center. So the bishop on c2 will be defending the e4 pawn whenever it's being pushed because of the knight takes variations. But also, the idea is hopefully for white to get e5 in, and then you'll see the bishop will be attacking on this diagonal. Now this is probably not the best in this situation because again, black is being kettled. So the bishop probably looks to go to b3 here to put pressure on the f7 square. Well, let's go ahead and continue. Black plays knight d7. A strange looking move here. What's black up to? There's two different ideas with this. Can you tell me, what are, what are some ideas you think, why would black play knight to d7 here? Remember, whenever you're playing your chess games, you always want to be uh, trying to think prophylactically and try to figure out what is my opponent's ideas. All right, let's see how you did. Well, one of the ideas is to play pawn to f5. Black is definitely going for a king side attack. For those of you who uh, know d4 setups, you'll know that this is actually looking like a king's Indian defense for black, right? Black usually goes for the king side, so f5, you know, typically white goes for the attack, but this time black is trying to, to take this on with f5. So black definitely has f5 ideas. And also you see that this knight over here maybe be jumping over to c5 or to b6. Uh, I definitely like the knight c5 move here as it's going to control the center, put pressure on e4. And even some ideas about jumping to knight to e6 here. So here the knight maneuver is going to be going over to the queen side slash center and also preparing f5. What is white to do? Here we go. 
knight to e3 definitely the best square as we mentioned before we don't want to go to g3 here as there's really no good square for the knight but here we put the knight to e3 and now we see that it's controlling the f5 square which black is trying to attack and also the knight's gonna look beautiful here on d5 too well here we go knight c5 attacking the bishop should we go to b3 or, or c2 oh easy choice for me we're going to play bishop c2. We don't want to lose our light square bishop. This is a very important bishop for attacking in the Ruy Lopez. Um, we can always kick this knight away later if needed. But here again, Steinitz has a beautiful idea in mind. Knight to e6. Steinitz uh, opponent Chikorin is saying, yes, you're not playing d4. He, you can see how he's really trying to stop d4 from being played. Steinitz says, that's okay. I'm going to go for a different route. I'm going to go ahead and attack you. This was a very common idea for Steinitz back in the day. Here, a lot of people would castle right away. And well, because the center is closed, here you can just start your attack. How did Steinitz start his kingside attack? Hopefully you see it. It's a nice and easy move here. Pawn to h4, letting your opponent know I'm going after this king. Simple idea, h5, and hopefully we'll open up this rook to get the attack going. Knight to e7 here. Definitely not a bad idea. You can see how he's trying to prepare the f5 uh, push again, or maybe even d5 here. Black has to do something because while well, his king is castled, white has a very simple idea. Let's attack, right? But because the center is closed here, uh, Shikarin really has no counterplay. So he has to do something, f5 or d5. Typically nowadays, black will just play something like pawn to h5, which isn't a bad idea. This is trying to stop these kind of uh, just pawn pushes to be played. But here white would have a nice idea to try and open up the king side. Hopefully you see it. Yeah, here... I'm pretty sure g4 would just get played right away, as there's really no good way to stop against this idea of taking. Other than taking, and as you can see, knight takes on g4, knight h6 plans. Yeah, knight f4 can get in here, but h5 is, is going to be soon to come in uh, pretty fast here. Rook g1, and I'm definitely liking white in this situation. We may even give up the bishop here just to achieve each h5 if necessary. Um, we definitely want to get rid of this knight because h5 is where, is where the next push is, and well, we don't want to just lose it for free here. So... What is black to do? Black again plays knight e7. He's trying to open up the center, trying to create some kind of counterplay. Here we go. Let's keep up with our idea. h5. This rook gets stronger and stronger the farther this pawn goes because it gets more and more squares. Pawn d5. Very good idea. Remember, when your opponent's attacking on the wing, you strike in the center. So d5 here is trying to make some queen trades. If black can trade off the queens here, he'll have a very uh, good game because, well, he won't get checkmated as easily here, right? Well... Steinitz is up for the attack. Let's go. H takes and F takes here. Typically, we have the rule take back toward the center, but you can see here that Shikorin has a, has a certain idea in mind. He wants more control over the F4 square and also wants to open up his rook. What do we play here? Should we take on D5 or play queen to E2? Definitely one of these is better than the other. What should we do here? Of course, we're just going to go up, go ahead and take on d5 here. If you played queen e2, practice your calculation. Here, black has two good moves to play. One of them being knight to f4, which just gives a nice little advantage here. Knight takes g2 ideas. Or maybe just the simple pawn to d4, trying to open up the position even further. Now the knight must move and we'll get the pawn takes. Or maybe they'll end up taking on d4. And then we can take back. And then the knight will take here. So yeah, here... I definitely am liking black's position because it's just opening it up and creating those imbalances. So here we go. Um, in the game, he does play the e takes d5, knight takes, and a nice way to continue forward. Knight takes, queen takes, and now the bishop comes to its rightful idea, bishop to b3. Here, things are definitely not so easy for, for black. Although black has opened up the center, he now has an e-pawn weakness. Although white has their own weakness here, the d3, which is a backwards pawn. And well... Black just doesn't have enough pieces out, right? If this bishop and rook in, was in the game, I would say black is doing great here. Here, Steinitz is able to build up a nice attack. The queen runs back to c6, develop with a threat. Queen e2, putting pressure on the e5 pawn, saying, hey, maybe I'll just take over here. You can also see how this bishop over here is a nice uh, pin. Knight g5 ideas are in the air, but they don't really work out just yet as the bishop defends the knight. Bishop 2d7 gets played, a very logical move. Let's just keep keep going with this. What should we play here? There's lots of different ideas in this position. What would you play here? Again, knight g5 is a nice idea, but it's a little too premature here. 
Hopefully you're looking about moving your bishop. Why is it so important we move this bishop? Because we want a castle, right? So where's the best square for this guy? Bishop 2e3. Just getting ready to castle queen side to get all the pieces into the attack. King h8 gets played. And here, hopefully you see it. Castles queen side. Now white is fully developed and the attack is going to come. And it comes particularly hard on black in this game. Black gets the last piece out. Rook a to e8. And what do we do here? This is a very interesting move by uh, Steinitz. I'm, I'm, uh, this is more of a prophylactic thinking move right here. When black played rook a to e8, he has a certain idea in mind. That's why most of the moves here are all, are all going to be about, all the top moves here are going to be about what white should play here. What is black's threat? Well, there's two moves that you should be analyzing here. Hopefully both of them are going to be either looking at, well, let's just say we weren't paying attention and um, let's just go rook h2. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad idea, right? Here there's knight to d4 that we have to worry about because of the pin. And we also have, um, let's see here, we also have knight f4 too. Again, this queen's just becoming a target and d3 and g2 can both become weak. So Steinitz comes up with an interesting idea and plays queen to f1. What an interesting move here. What does this do? Well, first of all, it's going to get out of these pin ideas. So knight d4, knight f4 won't have as big a blow on it. And also, white is preparing to strike in the center here. You can really see that the bishop's so strong on this diagonal. Well, this bishop is one of the main defenders. So Steinitz goes ahead and tries to get rid of that and just goes for the king's side attack. Here we go. a5 gets played in haste, trying to make sure that this bishop loses its nice diagonal. But here comes Steinitz. d4. Pawn takes. Knight takes. I definitely don't like the way black played here, but I can understand it. Bishop takes on d4 here. And, well, a nice move here by Steinitz, the only good move in this position. Most of you guys thinking bishop takes d4. Uh -uh. Here we go. Rook takes on d4 here. It's a very nice idea. Um, of course, black should not take on d4 with the, with the knight, as bishop takes d4 is just devastating. But also the idea is to bring the rook over to h4. Now, some of these ideas wouldn't work out too well if the queen was on e2. So you can see the queen f1 idea was really trying to prepare this beautiful d4 move. Here, black could have continued the game, but unfortunately, he just ends up jumping on the sword. I think he was just done with this game as, well, everything you're doing is just is just terrible, right? So knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, and uh, yeah, black just resigned here. There's really just no good moves here. It's a very beautiful position at the end. You can see the bishops really have this beautiful... Uh, set up just on the diagonal, just attacking this king. Um, but what what can black play in this situation? I guess there's only like one good move here. We could, you could try uh, rook to f6, and what should we play here as white? Hopefully you did not take on d4 so fast. Take your time here. Here, queen to d3. Maybe we'll look about trying to put more pressure on this uh, rook somehow. Maybe queen to g3, h4. Yeah, here white just has all day here, and this pin is not going anywhere. Well, I hope you enjoyed this game. I'll see you in the next one.